The James Webb Space Telescope is disturbing the apple cart out of nowhere. We understand that we might need to revise every one of the course readings about the start of the universe in their mission to grasp the primary stars and cosmic systems that illuminated the universe. Stargazers are still in obscurity yet drawing nearer to edification each revelation in turn. That is the mind-blowing inevitable end from uncommon revelations by the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, the 10 billion time machine that just formally shut its first year of perceptions. Intended to glimpse the weak infrared gleam of the universe's earliest radiant articles, Webb's vision ventured once more into the first few hundred million years after the huge bang permitting it to acquire more and preferred information about infant cosmic systems over some other office yet assembled. However, its corridor of cosmic child pictures has demonstrated more abundant than most specialists hoped against hope. Just put up in Comer cosmic systems in the early universe are springing up in numbers that resist expectations. With handful seen as up to this point, and that make researchers freeze out. As Charlotte Mason, an astrophysicist at the College of Copenhagen, said, we truth be told weren't anticipating this. In the weeks and months following JWST discoveries of shockingly adult early universes, scholars and spectators mixed to make sense of them. Could the flock of irregular enormous and brilliant early cosmic systems be due maybe on account of imperfections in the examination of the telescope's underlying perceptions? If authentic, might they at any point somehow be made sense of by standard cosmological models? Or quite possibly were they the first hints that the universe is more unusual and complex than even our boldest speculations had at any point assumed? And the huge bang hypothesis was at off base. Join us today as we dive profound into how the James Webb Space Telescope broke the universe. We should come to the heart of the matter to comprehend, understand the problem. We should return to when the universe was accepted to have been framed after the enormous detonation. The baby universe started chilling within a couple of million years. The bothering plasma that occupied space settled down in electrons, protons, and neutrons consolidated into iotas, generally impartial. Things were calm and dim for a period of unsure term known as the astronomical dark ages. Then something occurred. The majority of the material that flew separated after the huge explosion is made of something we can't see called dim matter. It has applied a strong impact over the universe, particularly at first. In the standard picture, cold dull matter, a term that implies undetectable or sluggish particles, was flung about the universe aimlessly. In certain areas, its dispersion was denser, and in these regions, it started falling into clusters. Visible matter, meaning molecules, grouped around the bunches of dull matter. As the iotas chilled, also, they eventually densified, and the first stars were conceived. These new wellsprings of radiation re-energized the unbiased hydrogen that filled the universe during the supposed epoch of reionization. Through gravity, larger and more complicated structures developed, building a huge trap of cosmic systems. In the meantime, everything continued to fly apart. The universe is expanding quickly. The stargazer Edwin Hubble sorted out in the 1920s that the universe is expanding. And in the last part of the 1990s, his namesake, the Hubble Space Telescope, tracked down evidence that the extension is speeding up. Think of the universe as a portion of raisin bread. It starts as a mixture of flour and water, yeast and raisins. When you combine these ingredients, the yeast starts breathing, and the portion begins to rise. The raisins inside it, representing universes, stretch further apart from one another as the portion expands. The Hubble telescope saw that the portion is rising considerably faster. The raisins are flying apart at a rate that defies their gravitational attraction. This acceleration appears to be driven by the horrible energy of space itself, alleged dull energy, which is represented by the Greek letter lambda. Plug values for cold dim matter and customary matter and radiation into the conditions of Albert Einstein's general hypothesis of relativity, and you get a model of how the universe develops. This lambda cold dim matter or lambda CDM model matches practically all observations of the universe. One method for testing this image is by checking the extremely far-off systems, similar to thinking back so as to the initial not many hundred million years after the gigantic applaud that began everything. The universe was easier than its development, more straightforward to analyze against expectations. Stargazers initially attempted to see the earliest designs of the universe utilizing the Hubble telescope in 1995. 
Over 10 days, Hubble caught 342 openings of an unfilled look fix of space in the enormous scoop. Stargazers were amazed by the overflow stowing away in the inky dull. Hubble could see thousands of universes at various distances and transformative phases, extending back to a whole lot sooner times than anybody anticipated. Hubble would proceed to find several really far-off universes. In 2016, cosmologists found its most far-off one called GNZ-11, a weak SMCH that they dated to around 400 million years after the huge explosion. This was surprisingly early for a cosmic system. But it didn't cast out on the Lambda CDM model. In part because the system is small with just 1% of the smooth way's mass. And in part because it stood alone. Stargazers required an all the more impressive telescope to see whether GNZ-11 was a crackpot or part of a larger population of bewildering early worlds. Which could help determine if we are missing an essential piece of the Lambda CDM formula. That's why the James Webb Space Telescope or JWST was born prestigious as the largest, most powerful observatory ever sent off from Earth. The JWST was built to alter how we might interpret the universe. Positioned 1.5 million km away from Earth interference and chilled near absolute zero. By its tennis court size, sunshade, the telescope carries a giant segmented mirror and perfectly sene instruments that were intended to reveal details of vast first light until recently never noticed. And that promise was kept as the first discoveries were obtained within weeks after JWST full operations were past cosmologists most out of this world fantasies. It has seen worlds incredibly near the earliest days. Of recorded history examined the atmospheres of exoplanets in remarkable detail and provided stunning new perspectives. On of universes in our nearby planet group however. It's just the beginning as Webb's vision comes to back. Into the initial not many hundred million years after. The huge express expian allowing it to get more and better information about infant systems than any other office however worked in question isn't anything not exactly our extremely comprehension of how the precise universe we know rose out of early stage confusion Webb's initial disclosures could alter the initial parts of infinite history which concern not only far off legends and distant universes but also our own existence here in the natural smooth way. As JWST researcher Mark McCaffrey a senior counselor for space space and investigation at the European Space Office said, you construct these machines not to confirm the worldview but to break it. You simply don't have the foggiest idea how they will break. Scientists utilize a form of the Doppler effect to measure the distances of objects. This is similar to sorting out the location of an ambulance based on a siren. The alarm sounds higher in pitch as it approaches and then lower as it retreats. The farther away a galaxy is, the faster it escapes from us as its light stretches to longer frequencies. And the size of this redshift is expressed as z, where a given value of z lets you know how long an object's light probably traveled to reach us. One of the main papers on JWST data came from Na, the MIT stargazer, and his partners whose search algorithm hailed a universe that appeared mysteriously bright and untouchably far off. Na named it Glass Z13 demonstrating its apparent distance at a redshift of 13. Further away than anything seen before, the world's redshift was subsequently updated down to 12.4, and it was renamed Glass Z12. Other stargazers working on different sets of JWST observations were reporting redshift values from 11 to 20, including one cosmic system called Cheer 1749 or CR27, whose light seems to have left at 13.7 quite a while back only 220 million years after the enormous detonation. Barely in a flicker after the start of inestimable time itself. These putative observations suggested that the perfect store known as Lambda CDM may be fragmented in some way. Universes became tremendous immediately in the early universe. You don't anticipate seeing gigantic worlds. They had the opportunity and energy to shape that many stars, and they hadn't combined as Chris Level in a study published in November scientists analyzed virtual experiences of universes governed by the Lambda CDM model and found that JWST early brilliant GY cosmic systems were arranged by size. Heavier than the ones that formed simultaneously in the recreations. Some stargazers and news sources claim that JWST was breaking cosmology, but not everyone was convinced. One issue is that Lambda CDM's predictions aren't always true while dark matter and dark energy are straightforward. 
Visible matter has complex interactions and ways of behaving, and no one knows exactly where it went down in the first years after the Big Bang. Those frenetic early times should be approximated in virtual experiences. The other issue is that it's hard to tell precisely the distance away cosmic systems in fact are. In the months beginning from the first papers, the periods of a portion of the supposed high redshift worlds have been rethought. Some were downgraded to later phases of cosmic development according to the updated telescope adjustments. Cheer 1749, for example, is found in a region of the sky containing a group of systems whose light was discharged 12.4 quite a while back. Furthermore, Naidu says it's conceivable the universe is quite of this group, a closer gate crasher that may be filled with dust that causes it to appear more red shifted than it really is. According to Naidu, Cheer 1749 is peculiar regardless of how far away it will be. It would be another kind of cosmic system that we didn't know about, a very low mass, minuscule system that has somehow developed a lot of residue in it, which is something we customarily don't anticipate. There may very well be these new sorts of articles that are puzzling our scientists. For the extremely far off cosmic systems, everybody knew that the most authoritative distance assessments would require JWST's most impressive capability. JWST not only notices starlight through photometry or estimating brilliance but also through SBC Broll copy or measuring the light's frequencies. If a photometric observation is like an image of a face in a crowd, then a spectroscopic perception is like a DNA test that can tell a singular's family ancestry. Na and other people saw as huge early universes measured redshift using brightness derived estimations, basically taking a gander at faces in the swarm. Utilizing a great camera, the technique is far from hermetically sealed. At a January meeting of the American Galactic Society, space experts jested that maybe a big part of the early cosmic system saw with photometry alone will go out to, as a matter of fact, be measured. However, in early December, cosmologists announced that they had combined the two methods for four cosmic systems. The JWST Progress Deep Extragalactic Survey or JADES group looked for systems whose infrared light suddenly cuts off at a critical frequency known as the LM and break. This break happens because hydrogen drifting in the space between systems absorbs light because of the continuing expansion of the universe. The ever rising raisin portion, the radiance of far off universes, is moved so the frequency at that sudden break moves too. When a universe's light seems to drop off at longer frequencies, it is more far off. Jade's identified spectra with redshifts up to 13.2, meaning the system's light was discharged 13.2 quite a while back. When the information was down, L. Jade scientists started blowing a gasket in a shared Slack gathering, according to Kevin Hain, a cosmologist at the University of Arizona. He said, It resembled good gracious goodness, my God, we did it, we did it, we did it. He said these spectra are only the beginning. My thought process will be stargazing changing science, he said. Brant Robertson, Jade Space Expert at the University of California, St. Nick Cruz, says the discoveries show that the early universe changed rapidly in its first billion years, with the cosmic systems developing multiple times faster than they do today. It's like the way that a hummingbird is a little animal. He said, but it's pulled so rapidly that it's living sort of a different life in comparison to different animals. The heartbeat of these worlds is occurring on a substantially more quick time scale than something the size of the smooth way. But were their hearts beating excessively fast for Lambda CDM to make sense of? Stargazers in general society exclaimed at JWST pictures. Researchers started working behind the scenes to determine if the cosmic systems blinking in our view really rely on Lambda CDM or just help to secure the numbers we should plug into its conditions. One important yet poorly understood number concerns the major majority of the earliest universes. Cosmologists attempt to determine their masses to tell whether they match Lambda CDM's anticipated timeline of world development. A world's mass is gotten from its brilliance, but Megan Donahue, an astrophysicist at Michigan State College, states that at best the connection among mass and brilliance is a ballpark estimation based on assumptions gathered from known stars and well studied worlds. One vital assumption is that stars generally form within a certain statistical range of masses called the initial mass function or IMF. 
This IMF boundary is crucial for gathering a world's mass from estimations of its brilliance because hot blue heavy stars produce all the more light while most of a system's mass is ordinarily locked in cool red little stars. However, it's possible that the IMF was different in the early universe. If so, JWST early universes might not be as heavy as their brilliance suggests. They may be bright but light. In conclusion, the James Webb Space Telescope JWST has opened new frontiers in our understanding of the early universe, challenging existing theories and revealing unexpected complexities. From its vantage point 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, JWST has provided unprecedented insights into the formation of galaxies and the evolution of cosmic structures just hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang. JWST's observations have led to the discovery of incredibly distant and bright galaxies, some with redshifts indicating they existed when the universe was very young. These findings have sparked debates among scientists about the nature of dark matter, the validity of lambda CDM models, and the evolution of galaxies in the early universe. The telescope's ability to combine photometry and spectroscopy has allowed researchers to measure the distances and characteristics of these ancient galaxies with unprecedented precision. Moreover, JWST has highlighted the rapid evolution of galaxies in the first billion years after the Big Bang, suggesting that early cosmic structures formed and matured much quicker than previously thought. This challenges our understanding of galaxy formation and evolution, prompting scientists to reevaluate existing models. As JWST continues to peer deeper into space and time, it promises to uncover even more mysteries of the universe's infancy and shed light on fundamental questions about our cosmic origins. The telescope stands not only as a testament to human curiosity and technological achievement but also as a catalyst for redefining our understanding of the cosmos.